Hello, hello. Hey, what's up? Oh my gosh, funniest thing. So I'm like sitting here and my watch goes off and I look down and it's LinkedIn and it's like Adobe Creative Cloud is live. That's us. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. All right. So welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining. Um, my name is Victoria or Tori Sykes. Um, I am a rising junior at Indiana University studying informatics with minors in creative advertising and human centered computing. So a tech nerd, if you will, but on the creative design side, for sure, which uh, fuels my love for all things Adobe and Creative Cloud. Um, on campus, I am really involved with my school. I am the president of Women in Computing. I am a pace setter, which is an ambassador group for diversity and inclusion at the school. I am also a member of the sorority Alpha Chi Omega. And of course, one of my favorite positions is I am an ambassador for the Adobe Creative Cloud at IU. So this will be my second year. I am super, super excited for all that is to come, but I'm also super excited for the discussion that we're going to have today. So everybody, I would like to introduce Shay. Shay is a multidisciplinary designer, formally trained in graphic design, UX and UI design, and various other studio art forms. He is currently an Adobe Creative resident who got his start in design, creating MySpace layouts for friends and family. Since graduating from IU Bloomington in 2015, he has worked as a digital creator and designer in the NFL for the Indianapolis Colts and the Atlanta Falcons, respectively. His work aims to combine his roots in studio art with technology and user-centered design thinking. So today we're going to talk about career paths, portfolio surgery, design interviews, personal branding, side hustles, and more. So everyone, Shay, Shay, everyone. <laughs> What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? And before we get started, I just want to let everybody know about our Discord channel. Um, you will see that in our chat. You can go ahead and join it if you're not already part of the community. It is a super awesome place to just go and get design ideas, talk to other creators, send memes if you want to. Um, it's a place to let loose and have fun or be really serious and get some really good ideas and send your stuff. So I highly recommend joining that. Um, if you do that and you stick around this entire broadcast, you will get an opportunity to win a chance to be mentored by Shay one-on-one, -on -one, which is awesome and i'm so jealous of whoever gets that opportunity so i wouldn't miss it um but let's dive right in shay if that's all right with you yes first question for you tell us about your journey so how did you get to where you are now um and those experiences like working for the nfl how did you land those opportunities for sure, for sure. And actually, real quick, let me just say, um, anybody tuning in, man, I really hope that you take from this uh, um, a little bit of inspiration uh, from somebody who's first generation college student, just trying to figure it out, had no idea what I was doing um, and sort of created this dream career for myself. So uh, hopefully that's what I hope the value you get from this. Anybody watching that you take from this um, and to talk about my journey, it's, this is always interesting because I, I never know where to start. Right. Uh, it's so like this, you know, what I mean, it's never a, uh, a linear path. And I guess I, for the sake of this, I probably should start with what I'm doing now. Right. So I'm an Adobe creative resident, which essentially means um, I am a sponsored creative by Adobe. Um, I pitched a project to them passion project of mine, which is, you know, exploring the future of mobility and, uh, you know, the electrification of the American gas station. Really cool project. I'm kind of in the back half of it right now where I'm kind of wrapping it up. And so uh, that case study should be up soon. And so if you're not following me on Behance and you're interested in seeing that project and how it turns out, uh, definitely give me a follow over there on Behance. Um, and so that's what I'm doing right now. But to rewind a little bit and kind of bring you back up to where I'm at now. Um, essentially, you know, I got my start. Let's go back to like 05, 06, I think somewhere around there um, is where I got my start in design. So um, I started, you know, making my space layouts. And the cool thing about it was that, you know, my brother, my older brother, he went to IU. And so when he would come home during the summer, he had a copy of Adobe, Adobe Photoshop 7 on his computer. Shout out to IU where. And uh, so he would go to work. I would go in his room and just sit at the computer all day. I'm teaching myself Photoshop. 
I'm making like lay HTML layouts for MySpace. I'm making profile pictures, um, amongst other things for people. And it was just a fun time. It was, it was, that was probably the most, um, sort of just fun and just free hearted time I had as a designer because there was no pressure whatsoever. Right. right? Absolutely. Um, so essentially, so from there, if we move forward to, um, graduating from high school and then deciding to go to IU because it felt like home for me. And once I got to campus, um, my freshman year, that was just, that was, I'm gonna just toss that one up for, <laughs> you know, whatever. It, it was freshman year. I didn't do probably anything productive. I hooped all day at the SRC or the Hyper. Um, I stayed at Right Food Court at Charlie Biggs. Like it was, that was, freshman year was like just whatever, right? And so the real turning point for me right? For like my mindset was the first summer when I got back home, um, I'm from Indianapolis originally. So when I went back to Indy for that summer after freshman year, and I, I was able to see like what my friends had been doing who hadn't went to college, I was able to hang out with them and really see what they had kind of been up to. Um, and I took like a summer job, right? So kind of laborious work, if you don't say, and you get to talking to people and they like, oh, I've been doing this 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And I'm like, wait a minute, like, this is the life that I, if I don't get it together, this is what could be there for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I didn't want that. So my sophomore year, that was the turning point for me. That's when I, um, started freelancing and I kind of became, I really got my bag. I really started sharpening my skills and, you know, I became rim graphics. That was the moniker that I started freelancing under. So, um, my sophomore year, I'm freelancing junior year. I'm freelancing. It's, It's getting bigger and bigger. And then my senior year, I remember like it was yesterday, um, we were in not Valentine. What? Oh, I can't remember the hall, but it was like a Mac lab. It was advanced Photoshop, right? So one of like the higher mm-hmm. classes you take senior year. And, uh, at the time his name was Jay. He was the, uh, lead designer for the recruitment department for the Indiana football okay. team. Oh, cool. And so he went around to like the different classes trying to, you know, recruit somebody cause he needed the intern. He needed some help. And like, I had this outer body experience where I'm like, wait a minute, like he's talking, he's talking about like the different stuff he would do, da, 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 et cetera, et cetera, blah, 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 like what he was looking for. And I just remember like being like, not in myself, but like looking at the class, like, wait a minute, like, this is your opportunity. Like, like, this is your time to like make that step to get to that next level. Um, So I applied, I got it. And so I spent my entire senior year fall and spring semester interning with the IU football team where I had the chance to really get my hands dirty um, with a lot of campaigns, recruitment campaigns, but also um, I ended up doing a wall mural, which was really cool. So like when you go into the the football team, the locker room, I was able to do like this really cool like wall mural, um, one of my favorite projects I was able to work on. And so from there, this is where in my journey, it kind of gets low. I kind of get to a a, a valley where um, I graduated I had all this this body of work. I had this great internship on my resume and I didn't have a job to show for it. I was kind of defeated, right? Because that's you hope for you you do all of this to hope that when you graduate, you got something lined up. Mm-hmm. But I didn't. And it was crazy because of the expectation, not only on myself, but like my peers. Everybody knew I was like one of the best designers that they knew. And they was just like, man, like Shay didn't get a job. Like. I'm probably not, I can't get a job. Like what? <laughs> like he can't find a job. So it was, it was bad. Um, that first summer after graduating, it took me a while to find something. So I was kind of just like working at FedEx part time, like doing laborious work, whatever, just like trying to find my way. And then, um, I ended up landing a internship with Simon property group. So Simon property group or Simon malls, as most people know, them, um, really big, like fortune 500 type of company. Like if you're in Atlanta, they own, Lenox Mall, Phipps Plaza. If you're in Indy, they own like Castleton Mall, Keystone at the Cross. And like the better mall than most yeah. big cities is the Simon Mall, right? Mm-hmm. So um, got the intern there. I took a lot from there because, you know, I love retail. I love fashion. Um, so that really gave me like a, 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 a edge. And I was able to take right. a lot of what I learned there into the NFL about like retails and launching and tip pole moments. Um, and then I remembered this. So... And this is advice for everybody. If you're an intern, don't feel bad 
about talking about other jobs at your internship because you're an intern. You, you're you not a full-time employee. It's expected that you're either going to leave and move on, et cetera. Um, so while I was at the internship, I got a text from my former supervisor, Jay, and he sends it to me. He's like, this has your name written on it. You got to go for it. And I look at it and it's the cults and it's like, graphic design intern. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Okay. Like, let me, so I'm at, I'm at one internship applying for the and next one. Yeah. And I literally applied Monday, interviewed Tuesday and got offered Friday is in oh one God. week. It was cr crazy. That's can't, so I can't plan stuff like this. Right. Oh, no, not at all. Cannot. Um, so ecstatic, excited because, and, you know, let me fan out for a second. Um, show my fandom. I grew up with the Colts. Like I grew up Peyton Manning, Marvin Harrison, Edger and James. Like shout out to all of them. They just went got into the Hall of Fame. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like so that that was the home team. So the fact that I was now at this point in my career, like in the building, like I got to see how stuff worked. I got to eat in the cafeteria with the players. I'm like, oh my gosh, like he's so tall. Andrew Luck or this is that. It was crazy. It was crazy times. And um, there as well, I learned a lot and I was able to do another wall mural that was like right when you go into the uh, practice facility as well. So that was a really cool moment and like a really big project for my portfolio. Always get portfolio pieces, please. If you get an internship, make sure you get something for the portfolio. That's a must. You have to if you're a creative. Um, and so during the Colts internship it was interesting because it was a year long. And at this point I had graduated and it was kind of expected that they would offer me the full time after my internship was over, but it didn't happen that way. And I tell people all the time, I say, you know, stuff is not happening to you. It's happening for you. Um, and little did I know what I had around the corner, I, I couldn't even have imagined. Do you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. in the moment, you're so kind of like, ah, you're just like down on yourself. Like, ah, uh, like I've had three internships up to this up until this point like why can i not find a full-time job um and just to write off a couple of names you know once i found out that i wouldn't get the full time um i started applying like heavy i'm like okay let me sharpen my portfolio let me get let me let me get let me i had a chip on my shoulder honestly because right. they didn't want to offer me the full time i'm not gonna lie so i was a little hurt i was like okay <laughs> i'm gonna show you i'm gonna show you what you're losing um so i interviewed with nba 2k that didn't land it. I interviewed with the Memphis Grizzlies. Didn't happen. Like I made the second round with them. Then I interviewed with uh, Dallas FC. So Dallas soccer team. Mm -hmm. And made it all the way to the end with that one. So I did the design challenge and everything. Didn't get that one. Uh, so again, I'm, I'm at a low again. If it, it feels like every time I get to a low, something comes. It pushes me back up to a high. And so this is um this is like my favorite story the way it happened it was really like a movie right Tori okay so look follow follow me yeah I'm following okay so at this point I'm like done with sports I'm like whatever I work for the Colts now I did IU football I'm done with sports let me try to focus on something else so mm -hmm. I apply to HH Grid um, as an email designer I get offered cool salary benefits cool the the same morning that H.H. H. H. Greg calls to offer it to me. I give him a verbal, you know, yes, whatever. I hadn't signed any contracts or anything. Mm -hmm. Later that day, I get an email around like five o'clock or so. I'm driving home. I got a stoplight and it's like Atlanta Falcons interview with Chris. And I'm like, oh my. <laughs> I'm like, really? Right when I got I offered for somebody else and then like the Falcons finally came up because I applied for it and I hadn't heard nothing back for like it had been like 45 days. It'd been a long time. I hadn't mm -hmm. heard anything. Um, and so, yeah, it was, that was an interesting time because I needed advice on what I should do. Do I still accept the HH Greg job? What right. do I do? Do I bet on myself? Um, and so eventually I decided not to accept it because that just didn't sit right to me to take the job, knowing that I could potentially be leaving in like a couple weeks. Um, so I declined it, bet on myself and I ended up getting, Falcons job. And so November 2016, I spent that last Thanksgiving with my family in Indy. And then that following weekend, I was down in Atlanta. And then as you know, we were in 
the Super Bowl, oh and God. it was just it was crazy. And you know, so the past four and a half years working with the Falcons, I was able to, you know, scratch off pretty much everything that I wanted to do. Right, um, we went to the Super Bowl. I was able to design the lo- a logo I designed actually ended up on the rings, the NFC Championship rings. Please, no 283 jokes. Please, that's <laughs> we past that. Um, and, you know, we opened up a new stadium. We launched new uniforms. So I was able to do everything I wanted to do in sports. And now that leads me to now where I'm a Adobe Creative Resident. And I'm kind of moving over from sports and graphic design to tech and UX, UI, and product design. Which that is amazing. I think just like that entire story is inspiring because there's so many times I, I mean, I speak for myself, but I think I can speak for anyone when I say there's so many times you're just like, I want to give up. Like I'm not getting anywhere with this, whether that's you're running out of ideas, you're like having creators block if it's things aren't landing. So just like hearing that alone is so inspiring. It's also, it's, (laughs) it's funny that of course, like, H.H. H. Greg offers you that day. That's how that always works, I feel like. <laughs> yes, every, like, oh, my goodness. It, that was the craziest day ever. <laughs> well, I mean, it worked out in your favor. Um, Justin Roy actually asked, what kind of design challenges did they make you do for those interviews? <gasps> oh, good question. Justin, my boy. Uh, okay, let me see. So uh, I'll give you a play-by-play. Okay, so for 2K that job specifically was to design i'm not sure how familiar you are with it with 2k justin but um there are like my player like team cards like my team and so they were looking for somebody to design like those cards and how they looked and like the special packs um so specifically they had me actually do a design challenge where i had to make like a christmas edition pack um and i submitted that uh following over to like fc dallas so the soccer team so they kind of gave me a prompt where it was like imagine i can't remember the name the player's name but imagine x player just scored three goals which is a lot in soccer oh, yeah. that's a lot of goals. what type of graphic you know package would you put together to celebrate that moment um so that was that one and then the other one for the falcons which obviously i killed because i got the job <laughs> it was a prompt where it was like imagine Devonte freeman just had a like career day and then it was like also julio jones had like 100 yards and so like i made like two graphics and like one of them was like kind of like an animated gif for twitter and the other one was just like static um and yeah that's that's kind of like the stuff you can expect is whatever the role that you're kind of applying for whether it's like digital digital focused or whatever it is um they'll kind of like challenge you in that space okay Okay. Interesting. That's actually really cool that you actually made a GIF for um, the Falcons because that was my first ever um, workshop that I taught for Adobe was Halloween GIFs. So I'm, I'm a, I'm a huge GIF person. <laughs> okay. Wait, Tori, we need to set, we need to settle this right now. I'm just curious. Oh, no. Is it GIF or is it GIF? For me, it's GIF. I don't, I, I used to get really mad if people said GIF, but uh <laughs> It's like I, I say gift, but yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I actually catch myself saying both. Um, but like back in high school, when I like first took my first ever web design class, I would like fight kids, like I'm not like fight, but like I would actually like, <laughs> know it's GIF, and then I would look it up online and made it a whole ordeal. But yeah, it's it's it's. It's all fun and games. Say how you want to say it, people. It's, <laughs> it's GIF or GIF, whatever. Yeah. It's fine. No, no big deal. Okay. Right. So going off of that, um, so we talked about highs and lows. And, of course, you can't enjoy the peaks without the valleys. But if you could do anything differently looking back, what would you do, if anything? Ooh. Um. This is hard. I mean, this this question is always hard because like I struggle with the thought of um, of like if I didn't do X, right. then all the rest of the like universe would have rippled and like had yeah. a weird effect. It's kind of like some sci-fi stuff. I'm kind of like, <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Like if I go back in time and, and don't do that, then like this person won't be born, et cetera. But no, uh, I think for me, I think would have been most helpful for me and what would have kind of like pushed me forward 
would have been like seeking mentorship. So what I mean by that is um, I'm first generation college. So that means like my parents didn't go to college, like my grandparents, et cetera. Like I'm the first one to like go and graduate. Um, and so a lot of this stuff was new, like, like internship, for example, like just that word was very taboo and it was associated with doing free work, even though I never had a unpaid internship. Um, so kind of like breaking down these different barriers that I had to go through first for my family um, and then moving into like my full time role and being in a real corporate environment, understanding like office politics, right? Understanding how to navigate these spaces as um, a black male, you know what I mean? Like understanding how to use my voice in these like meetings and stuff. Um, it would have been amazing for me to not have to figure that out on my own. And if I had somebody that was like 30 plus that been through it already and they could have gave me, you know, could have gave me the game like that. That would have been exponential for me i think absolutely yeah i think that's huge um something that i didn't even realize and um going into college just even if you don't necessarily have a mentor person in your life trying to student or faculty um that can can be that for you is super crucial and they help you with life things they help you with career things i mean that's that's a huge takeaway looking at it for me now i'm like okay who would i consider my mentor <laughs> i need i need one um okay no that's awesome to know um and someone yeah. and taylor oh go ahead go ahead oh uh, no i was just gonna say i like that you brought up um faculty because that's also something that i definitely missed out on while i was on campus i never really um i mean i was stuck in my room designing night and day so i was a little different but i never like developed that kind of like you know relationships with faculty members so um you don't have to wait until you get into corporate to find a mentor for sure like you can do it while you're on campus right yeah absolutely um but taylor asked kind of following up with that any advice that you have for those that are new to this field and new to graphic design oh new to the field um hmm i would say taste you need to taste you need to taste a lot of things taste a lot of different different flavors right graphic design is a very broad field now field now um you know you have people who specialize as like in like logo design or brand identity or packaging or uh billboard like physical material like billboards and tickets and etc so i think uh, for somebody new to the field, taste a little bit of everything so that way you could that way you can see what flavors you don't like and then you could start to eat a little bit more of those flavors that you do like, you know, a little bit more cookie. You, you might like cookies and cream, but you would never know because you didn't taste it. So you have to taste. That's a perfect way to put that, actually. I uh, I'm kind of like, I mean, I'm 20 now. And so I'm still definitely getting a taste for everything. And I've recently discovered that like photo manipulation is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, okay. and so, yeah. Um, but actually circling back around to this mentor question, um, Taylor Manning asked, how does someone go about finding a mentor outside of college? Oh, wow. Um, outside of college. Okay. Um, so there's this thing called cold email, right? And I actually, I left it out of my story when I was talking about my journey, but I'll I'll go back to this real quick, this little tidbit. This is a, a big piece of info. Okay. Um, when I applied to the Falcons job, one of the things that I leveraged was because I was working for the Colts, um, I'm in the NFL ecosystem as far as like Outlook, like the email database. So what I did while I was working there was I found whoever the creative director was for the Falcons. And then I typed in his name in Outlook and then his email popped up and I was like, Oh, cheat code. I was like, okay, here we go. So this, this, this is free game for everybody. Um, and so I sent the cre then creative director for the Falcons. I sent him a, what is called a cold email, which means no introduction, anything. It's just burr cold. Um, and turned out that he got my cold email and forwarded over like my resume and everything to the, the people, the department who was actually hiring for my position or whatever. So um, I say that to say, 
Tr start to try to tap into some cold emails. Start to try to find, um, especially D. We'll see back then, like you know, LinkedIn wasn't really popping like how it was, etc. But like now, I mean, you could literally go on LinkedIn, go to a company that you probably want to work at, just type in a company, go to um, people, right? Click it, and you can see all the people who work at that company. Look at the titles. Right. Click on a profile. Nine times out of ten most people have their email address or their website or something in their like bio, send them an email, just literally send them a call email, you know, introduce yourself, tell them who you are, uh, what you do, what you aspire to do and how you think they can help you along your journey. That's really, 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 really important. If you send a call email, always have some sort of like actionable item for the person that you send it to. Okay. Yeah. That's actually really nice to know because I feel like now with so many avenues and all these different like social medias and just what we have right in front of us, it's almost like, okay, where do I go? What do I do? How do I make this possible? So that's like going back to cold hard email. That's amazing to know. Yes. <laughs> it works yes. people, especially in the corporate world. Oh my gosh. Yes. Every, everybody that works corporate checks their email all the time. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm literally not in corporate world at all. And I'm understanding now I check my email. Yes. Like, I check my email and LinkedIn, like it's my, so my favorite social media LinkedIn is <laughs> I check my email like a yes. hundred times a day. Okay. Well, kind of shifting gears a little bit. Um, given the last year being a COVID year um, and we've had to exponentially just change how we go about life in general. And that means how we go about working as well. Um, do you think that the pandemic will have a lasting impact on this industry specifically? Oh, uh, well, Tori, I am not a market analyst. Uh, so please don't, <laughs> don't, don't take anything that I say with like, take it with a grain of salt. Um, but I think what I, what I can share is my experience with the pandemic. So I was, um, I did actually, I was affected by the pandemic and essentially what happened was you have to think about it from, you know, from a business perspective perspective. So imagine streaming companies during the pandemic, right? The Hulu's, the Netflix's, the Disney pluses, they all saw surge from the pandemic. They, they saw benefit from it because we're mm -hmm. all at home watching the shows. Whereas for, um, companies who's product or service is the live experience like sports like uh concerts music um it was jarring to, right. to, it was it was very jarring it was scary um you know we didn't know if we would we would have a season and so yeah. until shout out to the nba for doing the bubble the the, the bubble season you know what i mean that that uh put a lot of a lot of like okay like like we were like, okay, maybe we might have a season because the NBA just successfully did it. And um, we actually had, you know, being completely transparent with you all, we actually had like around the layoffs that first summer during the pandemic. Um, and I fortunately made that cut. And then so we went on to have the season that we had last year. And then unfortunately in January, after the season was over, January 28th to be exact, um, I was laid off from my job. Uh, they had another round of cuts because it was hard to tell to forecast what was going to come yeah. um, this year with everything. And so I would say that, um, you know, I was affected by it and I feel for all of the students who, you know, had internships lined up and, you know, you did, you, you weren't able to see those through. Um, I feel your pain. And, but I, what I, what I would say though, the benefit that came from this is the remote work. So that's, that's here to stay. Um, that really opens up a lot of opportunity for people. You know, originally I wasn't even like, I, I love Indianapolis. Like I, I didn't even want to move away. Um, I kind of moved out of necessity just because of wanting to work in sports. But Absolutely. now with the remote work, I mean, you right. know, you come it, back. It, people in, in Indy, yeah, I'm, you know, <laughs> like, hey, like people in Indy, like, like now we have a chance to, to you know, um, be able to rock with the Googles or these big companies um, in a remote capacity. So that's the benefit from it is the remote work for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're here right now, which is so cool. I don't know if a year and a half ago we would even be able to do anything like this. Wouldn't have been a, really a thought. Um, so, yeah, that's huge. I mean, I think 
that's the benefit about being on the design and the technical design side of things is at least we have our computers with us at all times. Um, so we can keep creating, whether that's, you know, for someone else or just for ourselves freelancing and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but that kind of leads me into the question about freelancing. How did you, how did you get into freelancing and do you have any advice for those who are looking to freelance? Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, um, lofty ones at you. So freelancing for me, um, free, I mean, freelancing was everything for me. Um, so like I said, I, once I came back sophomore year, I really got my act together and I was able to do that by freelancing. Um, like I still, I, I still, I have a picture of it somewhere of like the first check that I got from my first like freelance project that I did. It was a flyer. It was for um, the alphas and the zetas. Um, they throw a A to Z party at the beginning of every year. And so that year in particular, um, they hit me up. And I made the flyer and like they cut me a check and I was just like, wow, like I was like, this is crazy. So um, from there, like freelancing just took off for me because um, I pretty much had an end with the um, MPHC, like black Greeks on campus, like the different mm -hmm. fraternities and sororities. So at that point, um, I started doing stuff for the Kappas and then I started doing stuff for the AKA shout out to Tau chapter, like. And it just kind of like started to blossom for me. And then moving into my junior year, um, it was like I was doing stuff for people on IU campus and then people up in Purdue and West Lafayette, they started to notice. And it was like, well, wait a minute, like y'all, everything that y'all got is, is kind of hot. Who's making it? And then, <laughs> so then I'm, I'm so like, I'm literally doing like all the stuff for like IU campus, Purdue campus. Then I started having like clients in uh, Kentucky State and et cetera, et cetera. So like, I really had like had like a solid local re like the Midwest yeah. region. Um, I had like a nice little like client base freelance business that I was really running from um, my sophomore, junior year, and senior year. Okay. Okay. So, so I have this freelance gig going on, and it's a surprise right now, so I can't really talk too much about it. Um, but it is my, it's my first one and it's for a friend of mine. Um, and they were like, okay, I know you do graphic design. Could you possibly go ahead and create this for me? And I was like, you know what? Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Worst that comes out of it is I get some extra money and I can put it in my portfolio. Um, like, like there's not really a, a bad side to doing this. Um, yeah. but if I want to make this like something I keep doing besides just marketing myself on social media, cause I know that's a huge part of it. What do you recommend I take like next steps? Um, so I would say, well, first and foremost, congrats for just taking the leap. Right. <laughs> um, when it, when it comes to freelancing though, I think the biggest thing like now looking back on it, it's crazy. Cause I'm thinking about it now and I'm like, the thing you learn the most really freelancing is just like soft skills. Because okay. you're you're not just the project, like you're not just the designer, you're like the project manager, you're like the comms team because yeah. you have to do all the communicating with the client. Mm -hmm. Um, and you also have to like manage the money. Do you know what I mean? So you're like accounting. So like when you're freelancing, you gotta like wear multiple hats and it really sharpens your soft skills. So I would just say, um, you know, for me, I honestly really didn't even advertise myself other than, you know, at this time it was like 2013, 2014. So like Instagram was like at its peak. Like this was right. like peak IG, like IG would never be the same. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, the like make Instagram again. On Instagram. Yeah. Oh my God. It was, <laughs> it was the best time. That was the best IG time ever. Um, And so for me, I think what worked for me was people just enjoyed working with me and I did good work. So like, once you get one client, like one client has the potential to turn into um, two or three different leads, because you, if you do good work, they enjoy working with you and you meet the deadlines. Like, why would they not recommend you? Right. So like literally all my work was either people saw like my little at rim graphics at the bottom of like the work I was doing mm -hmm. or people just recommended me. OK, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. You know, if you if you produce, people are going to talk about it. People are going to like what they see. So that makes sense. Um, Austin asked, what is your opinion on freelancing sites such as Upwork, if you have any experience with that? 
wow. Upwork. Oh, wow. I haven't, I mean, I haven't looked at Upwork in a while because it's interesting. Uh, so Austin, what's up, big homie? Um, thank you for the question. Upwork is very, very solid. So actually when I got laid off, this was my first time really hopping into Upwork because up until this point, um, I pretty much kind of let my freelance business die out. So I really had no contacts or anything to kind of hop back into. Um, never do that. I would never do that again. But um, so I hopped into Upwork, to the Upwork world. And there are a lot of projects there, especially for graphic designers. Like if you look into okay. like get into like logos, t-shirt designs like if you want to design pamphlets i mean i'm talking about like thousands thousands of people who need like book covers so if you look interested in like designing like book covers go to upwork right now make a profile upload some work you will get you will get like a nibble trust me um it's a lot of work on upwork i would say it is um it takes a little while to get going because you don't really have like reviews. It's like with anything, right? Like it's kind of like you have a profile, you don't have any reviews, you don't have any like social proof is what it's called okay. where people yeah. can like trust your account. Um, so yeah, once you get a, once you get a couple jobs done, uh, a couple of reviews, I mean, you'll be well on your way on Upwork. Okay, good to know. I'll have to check it out. Um, Javier asks, in what ways did you sharpen your portfolio and all of your work just to stand out from other competition? as a freelancer or as a freelancer or just applying for jobs as well. Okay. Okay. You said, oh, wait, who, who asked that Javier? Yes. Javier. What's up, Javier? What's up, big homie? Um, so let's see how to stand out. Well, the biggest thing is like finding, I won't, I don't, I would say like find a niche, but find your edge. Right. So the, the, the blessing that you all have, and I say you all because I'm 28 now, so I'm old and washed Not and old. I can't keep up with stuff. <laughs> but <laughs> when you are your age, 18, 19, 20, 22, the luxury that you have is that you're young and you're in tune with everything. Yeah. Like, you know, you literally 18 to 24 year olds pretty much like control culture and control where a lot of things go because you all are the most in tune with everything. So that is your edge, is your age and understanding um, where culture is going. And so for example, right now, uh, I'm not sure what your medium is, uh, but if you are a videographer, mm -hmm. you, can, you have the time right now to narrow in and deep dive into like TikTok in a way that, yeah. you know, me at 28, I'm like, mm, Right. I, I may learn it a little bit just so I can say, you know, at a job or to a freelance client, I kind of know about it. But like you being younger, you can like deep dive into it. And that could be your edge over somebody who's older than you, more experienced than you. Um, you know, that's I, I think I think that's the edge. Honestly, I think you, you all have an edge right now. Just your yeah. youth. That's true. That, I mean, it's funny to think of this. And I, I saw one of my friends is a TikTok intern. And I was like, there's like, that's insane. That that's TikTok crazy. Has, and, and it's obviously not for TikTok, but just like her sole job is to do TikToks. Like that is amazing. That's crazy. Yes. One th oh, I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up. Cause like literally right now, um, like even in sports, like, you have to think a lot of people have built their careers off making, you know, three, four, five minute plus videos that lived on Facebook, right? right? Like Facebook is ancient or went on YouTube or whatever. But like now, like a lot of these, you know, if you want to get into sports, if you if you literally just made like a TikTok yeah. called like hire, hire me, mm -hmm. okay? And you made like an actual TikTok with like all like different edits and stuff that you did and that was the portfolio you pro you provided i mean you would stand out by like it, it would be it would be oh my goodness i just oh my wow wow if i was younger again <laughs> the idea i mean because y'all got so much stuff to like lean into it's crazy yeah yeah i mean i don't know if you are familiar with this TikTok, but there's this TikTok. I don't know where they're from. Um, shout out if you are watching this right now. Um, but where a 
high school football team is in the locker room and it went viral because they're clearly celebrating after a win and they're singing Eeny Meeny by Justin Bieber, that song, if you remember it. Um, and this girl is there that took the video and went viral for it is like their videographer for the team and for the school. And she's like now been able to use TikTok as her platform to like just produce all of her work and show it off. And like, that's insane. That's so cool. Yes. Just like a 60 second video and it can take you anywhere. Yes. Yes. I mean, even like, so, you know, if I, if I want to get artsy, like if you think about just the art form of telling a story in like 30 to 60 seconds like that is not a skill and i'm being for real right now like this is not cap like that is a skill that a lot of us you know i'm a millennial so a lot of us millennials we don't really have because we are so used to storytelling in more of a like three to five six minute format it's mm-hmm. like a lot of the video videographers and stuff that i work with Right. Um, a lot of them don't really have that skill to tell a story in like 30 to 60 seconds. So even honing in just on the idea of this is how you tell a story or this is how you keep people's attention. But 30 seconds, it's crazy. Like that's such a, that's, you have so much leverage if you can master that craft. Like, and you yeah. could teach me. <laughs> uh, maybe not me. Um, <laughs> I also, I also uh, cannot really tell a story in 60 seconds. I talk for way too long to get my point across. Um, <laughs> I'll try. I can, I can try. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's so true. Like people's attention spans don't even last that long anymore. Like I'll scroll through TikTok and I half the time can't even get through a 60 second video if it's not a good enough story. So I yeah. mean, you make a great point. Um, and to go kind of off of that, like with the freelance, um, role, how do you know what to price your projects at? So like, what's, mm. what's a good range? What do you, what do you do for that? Um, so I mean, pri- oh, pricing, 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 pricing. Um, so here I'll, I'll, I think it will be helpful if I say like what I'm actually charging. Right. So as a freelancer right now with a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, um, I charge $50 an hour. And that is based on not only just like my skill level, but also the speed in which I can, the speed in which I make design decisions, right? So something that more of a junior designer, they may stare at the screen for like an hour and 30 minutes and be like, should it be this big? Should it be this big? I could probably make that decision in 20 minutes, right? Because I'm more experienced. So I do things a lot faster. So I charge higher because I still want my money, right? Um, I think starting out, I would say like when I was in college, I was probably more around like the $20 range. And I think that's pretty good, especially for somebody in college freelancing because you don't necessarily have like, um, you don't have too much overhead, right? Like you may live in a dorm or you may live in a campus, uh, off campus apartment or whatever. Um, But yeah, you, you, you don't have to pay for health insurance or anything. So I think like around like 15 to $20 an hour if you want to price hourly or when somebody hits you with a project, you can say, okay, I think this project may take me five hours to do. So at $20 an hour, I should charge them like a hundred. So that's kind of just like a model to start to get you thinking like how you can price it fairly. And then if they come back to you and say, ah, I was hoping to do it for more for 50, then you can come back and say, well, actually this will take me X amount of hours and you get X amount of revisions, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Yeah. I mean that, that honestly like makes sense, especially like for me, like starting out in this freelance area, um, just knowing like you, you do deserve to be paid for what you're doing and the work that you put in and the time that you put in. So yeah, really breaking it down hourly, even if you don't, end up charging hourly or getting paid by hourly, making sure you know, you know, this is how much my time is worth. That's, that's honestly, that's so central. And I'm glad you said that. So thank you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And look, actually, let me, let me just add one more little nugget on that. Nine times out of 10, you don't want to go in at hourly because people don't, um, people don't respect your time. So what you want to do is use that model and just give them like, um, a base project fee. Right. So whatever you come up with, let's say it's five hours um, and then always add 20 percent because you just never know what happened mm-hmm. and you'll be good. Yeah. Always add 20 percent. Got it. I can do that. 
Okay. So um, for working with big brands, um, if you could give us like some expectations versus realities, you know, what um, everybody's kind of expecting to see, what, what it's hyped up to be versus what it really is, especially for people that may have already been in the freelance world and got to call the shots on their own. I mean, you just, you just hit it on the head. You just, you just, you just said it. Like you, I mean, you basically go from being able to uh, call the shots to being a fraction of, um, you know, sort of what you were. So for, for me, the biggest shift was um, the biggest things you can expect are less creative freedom, right? Because you're working with a really, really big brand who have a pretty established like brand identity you know what yeah. i mean you're not going to come in and change the colors for the falcons the falcons are black and red that's not yeah. changing you know what i mean like <laughs> so um and also the, but but i think actually let me put it this way i just thought about this working for a big brand is like the titanic right it's a really big ship um and you know when i saw the iceberg coming it was really hard to turn the ship you know what I mean? Like they needed mm-hmm. all hands on deck to try to turn this shit to right. go another way and pivot. Whereas when you work with smaller, um, you know, small businesses, smaller brands, it's more of like a, a speedboat, right? You just on yeah. the lake on a speedboat, you can turn, you go right or left, um, a lot more creative freedom to do what you want to do. So I think that's probably like really what it's like working for a big brand. It's just like you are a fraction of um of what actually you, you know like a, a product gets put out and you know you contributed like 0.5 percent to that project it still feels good that you contributed but you just have like a smaller role of contribution okay yeah i mean that makes sense like like you said they already have everything kind of established and your job is not necessarily to put your creative ideas out there but make theirs happen <laughs> yes okay that makes sense. Um, okay, so we have a question from Michelle. What are some essential skills to have in the creative industry? Oh, okay, okay. Michelle, what's up? What's up? How you doing? Thank you for the question. Um, essential skills. I would say for sure soft skills. Actually, number one soft skills. Uh, you have to be approachable. You have to be a people person. Um, you have to just be like, it, it's weird saying this, but it's like, just be a good human mm-hmm. because I kid you not, um, but... in industries, like people talk and there are a few people, you know, depending on like the circle or the industry that you work in, um, you know, if you're somebody who is like arrogant or doesn't take feedback, well, other people find out like people talk, you know what I mean? People go right. to the break room and talk. It's like people school. tag <laughs> sc- screenshot is real um so it's like you want to just be a good human be somebody that people want to work with because then that rubs off and you get so much more work um so many more letters are wreck that way so soft skills number one you got to have the soft skills then focus on the hard skills so whatever your medium is michelle i don't know if you what you video uh photo you're a writer uh whatever it may be then really hone in on your hard skills yeah, that makes sense. I mean, for sure, like it's essential what you can do, but no one's going to work with you if you're not, if you if you can't communicate, if you're not kind. Does that make so much sense? Um, and kind of going off of that a little bit, um, how do you how do you stay motivated? Whether that's working for a company, and you feel like maybe you've done everything, or like freelancing. Like I know there's so many times where I'm like, oh, I'm out of ideas. What do I do next? uh let me see i would say so okay number one advice for um anybody looking to work full-time at a company but also i suggest everybody that's working full-time as a creative have a side project the side project is going to keep you alive the side project is going to be like your soul food you know what i mean like it's it's going to like make things better um, cause you're going to get, you're going to have a chance to like make more decisions and really be creative, really kind of explore different things. Um, so I always, I always encourage everybody to have a side project. I look back at my career and I would definitely, definitely say 
the times when I was the most like miserable with my job every day mm -hmm. was times where I didn't have a side project going on outside of work. Okay. You know what I mean? To kind of like keep me like fresh, keep me like motivated. Um, Cause then also what happens too is that when you have X side project, whether it be a YouTube channel, a blog, whatever it is, mm -hmm. a lot of times the skills you're learning over here, you can carry over to your job yeah. and vice versa. The stuff you learn and incorporate, like, oh my gosh, for example, um, people love decks in uh, corporate, like slot shows. They call them decks, right? And I had never made like a deck before like that mm -hmm. was nothing you know I, mean, I freelanced all this time and i had never like made like a slideshow with like the work and everything right um and so once i got like in-house i was like wait a minute like y'all love slosh <laughs> like it's like everything make it a deck like are you we doing this we got to pitch this idea to the cmo or we got to do this like make a deck so um definitely it's a lot of stuff that you can pull from both sides if you have a side project and if you work in like in-house okay yeah, that makes sense. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna call out Max. Um, Max is my boss at Adobe, and Shay knows him. Um, <laughs> when we were hiring more ambassadors on on the IU campus, um, he was like, "Hey, here's some of the resources and the tools that um, I'm gonna have you fill out when you get get new interest and new application." And like half of them were slide decks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, they eat. Look, shout out to Adobe, but yeah, they <laughs> slide decks are like I don't know. They get they, they keep it. everything organized, but sorry. Max. Yes, yes. So <laughs> <laughs> he probably about to slack us or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hopefully, he's, he's still on the uh, summer institute with the other investors. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Um, but besides staying motivated staying sharp how do, how do you keep up to date and stay sharp um go outside go go outside like i was thinking about this the other day um like if you think about somebody like like i take a lot of inspiration from um tinker, tinker hatfield mm -hmm. most famously known for like designing some of our favorite air jordans right mm -hmm. um a lot of the inspo that he pulled for those silhouettes for those sneakers happened because he went outside like he saw like a building that had a certain shape and he pulled that into like his design you know what i mean mm -hmm. um so i think getting away from the screen because yeah. as a creative a lot of times we just sit at the screen all day or scroll our phone like get off pinterest get away from the screen and literally just go outside um yeah. it'll really like keep your mind sharp and keep you kind of like it's it's just something about it. Please, people just go outside. <laughs> Literally in today's day and age, like actually go outside. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. So like with that and staying sharp and staying motivated, has there been a project that's just really been challenging for you? Uh, probably didn't really challenge you. Um, let me see. Oh, Cam. Cam, big Cam, big yes, bridge. What's up? Uh, so this... This question is coming from my dog. Um, we work together. We oh, intern together him. at the Colts at the same oh, time. Yeah. Um, so shout out to bro. But let me see a, a, a challenge. It really challenged me. I would say for me, the most challenging probably, I would say schedule release. So uh -huh. I'm going to try to make this one quick because I want to answer more questions. Um, so in the NFL, Every year, it's a big deal when the schedule gets announced, right? Right. And essentially, up until this point, you know, I don't, we don't want to take all credit for kind of revolutionizing the schedule release, but right. um, typically, people just, you know, teams will just tweet out, "Here's the schedule. That's it." People will go buy tickets. We had like a different approach where, um, you know, like we put together like this this fire video. Like the editing was crazy. I dressed up as a player. And I was like, kind of like touching and then like the screen would go like, boop, boop. And like, it was like this futuristic whole theme. It was crazy. So like, I was like a player. Then I like designed the interface for it. Um, and then I like my guys in the video department, they like edited it and like put the motion graphics to it. And it was crazy. And it was like a really big team effort. Um, I want to say that was probably like one of my like most challenging projects because it was, so, it was so new and different. Yeah. 
That is. Oh, my gosh. I can't even imagine. Um, and kind of going off of that, just a really quick question that I see in the chat from Taylor. Um, what you talked about interface. What is UX and UI design? Oh, uh, let me see. So shout out Taylor. What's up? What's up? Um, UX. So here UX is user experience and then UI is user interface. So the two kind of like work together. Essentially, what I tell people is UX is it's a methodology of how you approach a project. It's basically the insurance, right? So typically in a, in a, in a regular flow, people will just design something. They will put it out and hope people like it. What UX is, is UX is you go do research to find out what people actually want. And then you create the said product or service. So it's all about putting people first. Um, and it essentially works as like insurance, you know, so you can say, hey, we did this research. Ten users all said we need, um, I don't know, we want more hangers or something. So now we're going to go make more hangers. It's basically like insurance. Okay. <laughs> it's like, I like that. It's like insurance. Uh, yeah. Okay. So before I'm going to ask, like, I think maybe one more question, because this one's kind of a lofty one I'm about to throw at you before we end. Um, okay. But before we do that, I just want to let everybody know if you are not already, if you want to join our Discord, um, please send us more questions through there. Um, she would be happy to answer them. I know we didn't get to every question on the live, so we would love to have him answer those. So go ahead and send those in the Discord. If you're not on there, it is a great community to just go share your work, to go get ideas, to relax and memes, have fun. Um, I'm on there all the time. It's a great place to be. So I highly recommend go drop your questions in the chat. And if you go and you go drop your portfolio in the chat or you ask for some help for mentoring, you might be selected. There's going to be two to three people, maybe more, um, yes. that Shay is going to hand select to give a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session. So you don't want to miss out on that. So definitely go check out our Discord. And with that... Um, kind of following along what our mentoring session might be about. Um, last question. How does personal branding help in your own work and how does it help you get your foot in the door? Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, let me give you, here, let me give you the, the short and sweet version. Um, personal branding Personal branding is like everything. Personal branding is like the aura you give off. Personal branding is what people say about you when you're not in the room, right? Um, you want to be just very, very cognizant of the personal brand that you are building. Make sure that um, it aligns with where you're trying to go. So, for example, for me, I knew I wanted to work in sports. So, you know, the fonts that I was using, I was using like impact Rockwell, like these really like big, bold, aggressive type of fonts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It all kind of aligned with where I was trying to go. Um, and the personal brand I was trying to build same with, you know, I had a YouTube channel or I have a YouTube channel, um, where I focused on like sneakers and streetwear and stuff like that. So I was very strategic in thinking about how I built my brand and how I wanted to be perceived as I went down this path into like sports and lifestyle um sort of like industry or whatever so the per personal brand is everything um it starts i mean oh, gosh i could talk about personal brand forever bro please look please people <laughs> hop, hop in discord please um like i would love to talk about personal brand like more but i know we kind of running out of time yeah yeah we we are close to time but i mean i think that's huge especially for like you said like the edge for my age, that's something that people are really trying to figure out right now is their personal brand and my age and how they can add that to the edge that they already have. Um, so a mentoring session with you about how, how you got about yours yes. and where to go from that would be huge. And like I said earlier, I'm just absolutely so jealous of whoever gets that opportunity. Um, I'm, I might make you give me one anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Thank you so much for this last hour and telling us all about your experiences, walking us through what's made you successful and what you've done to to get to where you are and giving us those pointers about what not to do and what to do and and that it's not the end of the world with every every mm -hmm. little little valley because again we have to have those valleys to appreciate the peaks. So 
Thank you so much. This has been so insightful and such a great conversation. You are so easy to talk to. So I appreciate, I appreciate everything. And thank you so much. And thank you everybody for tuning in. I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys did too. Thank you everybody and have a wonderful Wednesday. Yes. Thanks everybody for sharing time with us. Great combo. Peace and love. Peace and love.